Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Lexus Market Review webinar. Guys, I trust you have all had a fantastic week in the markets and have had a brilliant weekend and, of course, ready for the week ahead. Guys, we have some fantastic content to cover this evening. Last week, we had some very important data that was released to the markets and we're going to take a look at those data releases this evening and then of course we have some fantastic charts for you lined up this evening before we get started we will take a look um, at the silver position that we placed last week within the markets so um, first of all Let's take a, back, uh, a look back to silver. So guys, if you can remember last week with silver, and if we take it back to um, the 17th, we were looking at this price action here. And what we were looking for was, we were looking for a retest of this price area around here at this support level looking at this 1565 support level and what we were expecting to see was the sellers come back into the market from this resistance level and we'll just mark that up this resistance level here these highs the highs where we saw the sellers come into the market so we were expecting to see this price action and then to see the sellers push prices back down to this support level and then we were expecting of course to see the prices continue to the upside so what we did see was of course we saw that price continuation to the upside but unfortunately it didn't quite come back down to this support level to pick up our order we had our order just sat above this level at this 15.66 price level. But unfortunately, we didn't see this retracement fall hard enough down to this level. What we had after this retracement was a bullish engulfing candle. And the buyers were now firmly in control. We had a mild retracement over this resistance level through this candle here. And then after that retracement, the buyers came into the markets and ultimately we saw that 1620 level reached once again. So our expectations in terms of the price direction were correct. We were expecting higher prices. And we saw those higher prices, but unfortunately, it just missed our, missed our entry by uh, just under 10 pips. We're looking at about 9 pips um, for our price entry. So 15.66 was where we were looking to enter via a buy order within the markets. Unfortunately, the prices didn't quite get there. They went to 15.75, and then we saw our expectations met so not a problem guys we had our risk managed we didn't take a loss but we didn't get filled on our order so guys let's uh, let's take this from last week let's look to the week ahead and ultimately let's make some profits this week let's be sure to place our orders in an area of the markets in which we're going to get filled on our orders and then the following week we will be talking about the profits that we have made within the markets so no fill on this order so we didn't get filled on this order so no profit no loss we move on to the week ahead uh, guys, before I move on, do you have any questions about 
the position that we planned last week. Uh, if you do have any questions, just pop those into the box and we can address those before we move on. Uh, if you don't have any questions, what we'll do is we will take a look at the previous week's fundamental events and then, of course, we will look to the week ahead. And guys, we had a big one last week. We had the FOMC meeting minutes and there was some very interesting information that I want to share with you all this evening. Okay, brilliant. So if we don't have any questions, we will uh, move on for the moment. So what I want to do is take you back over to Forex Factory, to what we were looking at last week. Of course, we were preparing for the week ahead, and we identified a few areas within the market, um, a few events taking place, which could impact our potential trades. So what we had was uh, the monetary policy meeting minutes for the Aussie dollar. And of course, last week we had our pending order from the week before still live. We had our Aussie US dollar short still in the market. So due to this data, due to this monetary policy meeting minutes data, and of course the FOMC, we decided to cut that order from the markets. It no longer met the criteria. Last week it did meet the criteria and unfortunately it just of course missed, uh, sorry, the, the week before last when we placed that Aussie US dollar. It did meet the criteria and it just missed our entry, very similar to gold, just missed our entry within the markets. So we looked last week at the week ahead. We identified this monetary policy meeting minutes and the FOMC meeting minutes could impact our trade significantly. So we cut that trade. We got rid of that order within the markets because it no longer met the criteria. The market conditions had changed. So when the market conditions had changed and it no longer met the criteria, it wasn't a trade to take. So the monetary policy meeting minutes came in for the Aussie dollar in the early hours of Tuesday morning. And we did see some bullishness to these meeting minutes. However, this bullishness that we saw was quickly taken out of the markets. If any of you were watching the Aussie US dollar last week, last Tuesday, you would have noticed that after the Aussie dollar rallied, it then sold off quite significantly. And this was due through to some data which came out from China in regards to the coal exports between China and Australia. So this took any bullishness that we saw from the Aussie dollar out of the markets. There wasn't anything substantial. There wasn't anything big that we saw from the central bank in Australia, from the Reserve Bank of Australia. There wasn't anything big or anything substantial that we saw to move the markets. It was a fairly standard report. We saw a slight bullish behavior taking place, a slight hawkish undertone that um, they were expecting, of course, exports to increase. They were expecting uh, the building construction sector to increase and ultimately they were expecting jobs to increase as well. Now they didn't mention anything about an interest rate rise, they just stated their predictions for the months ahead. And of course guys, every central bank 
tends to look kindly on their economy. So it was rather expected of the Aussie dollar to react in the way that it did. There was no major reaction, but there was some buying pressure that came into the markets nonetheless. Uh, so guys, moving into Tuesday morning uh, with the pound sterling, we had the average earnings index. And this is a three month, uh, so a quarterly data release, uh, three months on the year. This was expected at 3.5%. It just missed out on 3.5% and came in at 3.4. But these are some steady figures now. We've seen 3.3, 3.4, and now 3.4. So again, we're seeing some very steady figures, very progressive figures in terms of average earnings. And if we, apologies, there we go. Uh, if we take it back, guys, you can see from November 15th, 2017, 2.2%, 2.5, 2.8. We had a small slide in mid 2018 back to 2.5 but 2.6 2.7 3% 3.3 3.4 we're getting some very consistent data out for our average earnings and this put some bullish behavior into the pound off of the back of this data so we saw the buyers come into the pound early throughout last week on the back of good average earnings data. And I, th I do think there is some good potential for some upside on the pound sterling. Although I think it's not ideal for us to, to plan on a weekly webinar uh, because the conditions can change quite quickly. Of course, we've got Brexit. We've got a lot of data coming out for Brexit. Our webinars are kind of on the macro picture, being once a week. So I think any opportunities for the week ahead regarding the pound, I think, guys, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open to the Facebook group, the Luxess Facebook group. And I may be putting in some analysis in there for the week ahead with the pound sterling. But we'll take a look at that in the, uh, in the second half of today's session. So there was good, the, although it missed out on the um, forecast for the pound of 3.5%, came in at 3.4%, we are seeing some good consistent figures in terms of average earnings. So moving into Wednesday, we had uh, some disappointing data for the wage price index quarter on quarter, 0.5%. Ultimately, on the macro picture, very consistent data from 2000, even from 2017, you know, even back into 2015. It's fluctuating between 0.5%, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 not to 0 0.5. So very consistent data there for the Aussie dollar in terms of wage price index quarter on quarter. Now, guys, this was the big one. This was the big one. FOMC meeting minutes. This was some powerful information that entered the markets. And I want to... Um, I want to share a little bit of that with you this evening. So, of course, we had the meeting minutes from the FOMC. This was for the meeting that take, uh, took place at the end of January. So at the end of January, on the 29th to 30th, there was a meeting. And from this meeting, the minutes were collected. The minutes is just the, the brief of the meeting, the contents of the meeting. This was collected. And then, of course, released to the public. So 
<clears throat> starting off for the FOMC, the information that was available um, from that, that meeting in January uh, indicated the labour market conditions. So the employment uh, market continued to strengthen and that growth in the GDP and gross domestic product was solid in the fourth quarter of last year. So in the final three months of 2018, we had some fantastic GDP data for the US dollar. Although the um, availability of that data was a bit more limited than usual because, of course, we had that government shutdown in December, uh, consumer price inflation um, was a little bit below 2%. So although this information was limited and there may be more to the story you know we don't know just yet of course because of the extent of the government shutdown because of the um because there isn't quite that data available because of this um you know they, they stated that um, inflation was you know around two percent they couldn't quite accurately confirm that but um it was still a bit below that 2%, sorry. Uh, the 2% level is, is what the US government wants, what the Federal Reserve wants for the economy. They want a 2% level of inflation. If they can meet that level of inflation, then they will hit their targets in the other areas of the economy. So uh, despite the you know, it's, uh, the limited data, um, inflation was just a bit below that 2% level. So, of course, guys, we had some fantastic non-farm payroll figures, especially in December. Um, the total non-farm payroll employment expanded strongly in December and again throughout January. The national unemployment rate edged up but was still at a very low level it's still below four percent which is again meeting those targets so while the labor force part uh, participation rate also increased somewhat as a result the employment to population ratio remains steady in december so although we are adding these jobs throughout december throughout january in strong figures um, and even throughout February, uh, the, the strong figures for um, the non, uh, non-farm payroll figures, the non-farm employment figures, although we saw strong figures across there, there was still, you know, there, there was still that level of, um, it, it didn't really affect the employment or the unemployment level, the national unemployment level. The national unemployment level of course, if we're adding jobs month by month, we expect to see that employment level decrease, uh, sorry, increase. And of course, if we see that employment level increase, we see unemployment decrease. So of course, if we're adding jobs, we would expect unemployment to go down. But of course, we have people being sacked from their jobs, being made redundant from their jobs, being released from their jobs. So, of course, this all balances out. So, although we increased through good non-farm payroll figures, the labour market, what we saw was unemployment remained steady. We didn't see unemployment drop because that were, you know, we saw people elsewhere being made redundant or losing their jobs for, you know, various reasons. So although there was, you know, those strong data, uh, that strong data release um, in terms of jobs, it didn't really go follow through to the unemployment sector. Uh, so industrial production increased solidly throughout December. Output gains were strong in the manufacturing and mining sectors, while the output of utilities declined slightly with the warmer weather of course they were expecting people to be using more gas more oil to heat their homes but the warm slightly warmer weather than normal people weren't using that heating or those utilities 
So after assessing the current conditions and the outlook for economic activity, uh, the labour market and inflation, members decided to target the range of federal funds, uh, federal funds rate at two and a quarter to two and a half percent. So what does this mean? Um, this means they look, they've looked at all those figures, the, the strong employment figures. They've looked at the strong industrial production figures. They've looked at the strong manufacturing and the strong mining sector figures. And they've also looked at the negatives. Although there was the strong labor figures, you know, unemployment didn't really decrease. It stayed at the same level. And, of course, we saw utilities not doing as well. Of course, due to the warmer weather, people using less natural gas, less oil. Of course, we saw disappointing figures there. So what this means is that the FOMC members have taken all of this information into account. And they said that they target the federal funds rate at two and a quarter percent to two and a half percent for the current economic outlook for the short term to mid uh, sorry for the mid term to long term over the next three six nine twelve months they are not really expecting to increase interest rate levels they see them at the current level or maybe they might increase to two and a half percent but the current level is where they see that federal funds rate so they did note, of course, that, that slowing growth as well. And, of course, the trade concerns with China as, as well. This was all taken to it into account. If we didn't have these trade concerns with China, we would more than likely see um, more growth within the economy. There would be more certainty within the economy. And then we may have seen the FOMC increase that projection instead of being at two and a half uh, two and a quarter percent and two and a half percent then maybe they would have looked to increase that to 2.75 percent or maybe even up to three percent in which case we would have seen a much bigger uh, much bigger movement for the us dollar but guys don't worry we'll go through all of that together uh, over the coming weeks and you'll you'll learn how to understand this information so that was really the, the bones with the FOMC. It was uh, a very powerful data release. And we did see uh, an immediate reaction within the US dollar. We saw the US dollar initially begin to sell off. And then it strengthened up quite considerably. So... This is something to take into even this week, even this week ahead, because this is a macro picture, uh, a macro picture forecast, if you will. So this is relevant, not just for last Wednesday, but for the weeks ahead. This, guys, this is why it's so important for us to understand the fundamentals so uh moving into thursday guys we had unemployment and employment change data and we saw some very positive figures come out for this uh the figures came out uh 39.1 thousand more than doubled the expectation more than doubled the expectation so it was some very powerful data but after this the the aussie dollar collapsed if you look at the charts the aussie dollar got up to uh the aussie us dollar got got up to on the charts i believe it was about 72.05 off of the back of this data and then there was some negative data that came out for the aussie dollar and this was uh, china had banned all coal imports from australia which is a big export for australia um, and a big part of their economy 
So when they banned this, of course, it's so uh, we saw the sellers come into the Aussie dollar quite substantially. So although we had this good data for the Aussie dollar and we saw the buying pressure increase and some confidence come into the Aussie dollar, that was quickly taken out by this ban of coal exports or ban of uh, coal imports uh, to China from Australia. So moving into Thursday morning, this was a big one as well, guys. German flash manufacturing PMI data. This came in below 50, well below 50, which means the manufacturing uh, sector in Germany is contracting. It's getting smaller and smaller. They're not doing the work that they were doing months ago. Months ago, they were doing, uh, you know, the manufacturing levels, if you see, were much higher. 53, 52, even still into 2018, you know, up to the 60s. Now, guys, I want to take your attention over here. Above 50 indicates industry expansion, which means if that figure comes in above 50, that manufacturing sector, uh, sector in Germany is increasing, it's getting bigger. If it comes in below 50, that means the manufacturing sector is shrinking it's getting smaller and guys what have we been seeing since 2017 it's been getting smaller and smaller and smaller and now it's finally below 50 in january it was below 50 just and now at 47.6 this is why the euro sold off quite substantially on Thursday, on Thursday morning. It was this poor manufacturing data for Germany, which is why we saw the euro sell off so substantially. And guys, we're going to have some fantastic opportunities with this because on a macro picture for Italy, uh, sorry, on a macro picture for Euro, uh, Europe and the European Union, we have Italy in a recession. We have Germany just avoiding a recession, but I have a feeling these disappointing figures are going to see Germany in a recession. So it's looking as though the ECB, the European Central Bank, their decision to unwind on stimulus and to, to wind back on their stimulus programs may have been premature, and the ECB may have got that wrong. And as a result, we could start to see quite a quick slowdown within the European Union. And we have started to see that through, you know, since really throughout um, the last, two quarters in 2017, uh, 2018, we started to see the European Union growth slow down from the big players, you know, especially from the big players from, from Italy, from France, from Germany, from the UK. We started to see those figures fall down further and further. So although Germany just escaped a recession guys I think this may just push them over the edge and if we see Germany in a recession guys expect the euro to sell off quite heavily indeed Germany is the biggest player within the eurozone they are propping the European Union up and if Germany's growth 
becomes negative and they're in a recession, we're not going to see them prop up the European Union as much. And we're going to see really the troubles that the European Central Bank is facing. So into that, um, following that, flash services uh, for Germany were pretty good. But Germany is a big exporting nation. It's a big manufacturing nation. It's a huge exporter. And it's an exporter of goods, not services. The UK, on the other hand, is more an exporter of services and not goods. So the flash, although the flash services were good for the euro, that was overshadowed by this disappointing manufacturing, manufacturing data. So moving on to that, to Thursday afternoon, and then to quickly wrap up Friday, uh, court durable goods orders month on month was disappointing for the US dollar coming in at 0.3%, although up half a percent from the previous figure. Uh, but these figures, guys, were delayed by about 20 days, I believe. Um, yeah, release date delayed by 27 days due to that government shutdown. So these figures for are for cool back uh, these figures are for december but they should have come out january so um yeah because of the government shutdown we've seen a delay on when they came out so we should see some uh, more figures come out soon for uh for january uh moving in we had governor Polos speaking uh governor Polos um was speaking about monetary policy and we did see a big movement in the Canadian dollar. We saw the Canadian dollar strengthen up. And this was off of the back of this talk about the monetary policy. We saw uh, some very good points being raised by Governor Polos, very strong points in regards to uh, the Canadian economy. Um, <clears throat> so to break it down, unemployment rate is forecast to drop. So when employment's forecast to drop, that means employment is expected to rise. Inflation was likely to increase. And uh, it's also possible that the economy is a bit softer than what they expected. So um, although it's a bit softer than what they expected, you know, they're expecting the jobs um unemployment to decrease um so you know as a result what you know we're not going to see <clears throat> um the canadian uh, the bank of canada implement these monetary policy tools so we're not going to see any big decisions made from the bank of canada everything's starting to turn around and tick in their favor so as a result we saw the Canadian dollar strengthen up quite substantially. Same with Governor Lowe. Um, now, Governor Lowe was um, testifying before the House of Representatives Standing Committee on Economics, uh, and this was this was fairly positive. Again, he was uh, expecting some good data ahead for the Australian dollar, but. Um, we didn't really see too much movement for the Aussie dollar in terms of that. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's good information to take in that they are expecting continued growth, you know, for the Australian dollar. So, guys, um, moving into Friday. We had core retail sales month on month for the Canadian dollar. Met its expectation, minus 0.5%. No real change there for the Canadian dollar. And then finally, we finished off with Mario Draghi speaking. And guys, Mario Draghi was speaking a lot about nothing. All this was, was a speech as he accepts an honorary degree from the university in Bologna. 
there was really nothing to to move the euro there was nothing major that he said so there was no real interest in this data release so guys that wraps up uh, last week it was you know apart from the fomc and the australian dollar it wasn't it wasn't uh, such a volatile week this week though guys i think is going to be a little bit more volatile so starting off monday we have governor carney speaking tomorrow for the pound he's due to hold a press conference in london and this is you know he's going to speak quite heavily about brexit over this press conference um and how the bank is prepared for brexit so for this reason do you remember if I mentioned at the beginning or towards the beginning of this webinar that I wasn't going to plan any positions with the pound tonight because it's on a macro basis. We see each other once once a week. But what I can do is after we get this data out of the way Monday and Tuesday for the pound, I can start to look to upside potential. And then if we have any opportunities, you know, I can get uh, I can get uh, a chart, print screen, and pop that into the Luxess group on Facebook to ensure that uh, you know we don't miss out on any opportunities there with the pound. So, although I'm unable to to place it tonight, we're still going to have opportunities for the week ahead. So, the big one there to start on Monday morning. We have the inflation report hearing uh, Tuesday morning for Governor Carney. Again, that's going to be a big one for the Bank of England. So, as mentioned, I just want to get Monday and Tuesday out of the way and done with with the pound, and then, guys, we could have some uh, some good opportunities for the month ahead, uh, for the week ahead. Sorry. Uh, moving into the afternoon, we have CB Consumer Confidence. Now, this was at a 16-year high. Um, oh, cool, we can't see the data, but uh, this was at a 16-year high um, towards the end of last year. We saw some very strong data coming out for CB Consumer Confidence. That's dropped off slightly, but they're expecting to see that pick up now. We're expecting to see that increase from the previous figure and then of course we have fed chair powell testifying i presume to the house of representative or to the congress oh no to the senate banking committee there we go so due to speak on monetary policy report before the senate banking committee tuesday afternoon will be quite volatile for the us dollar guys so look at this time Bearing in mind this is UK local time. So look at this time, look at these data releases. Guys, these have the potential to move the US dollar quite significantly, especially this one. Okay. So Tuesday afternoon, we're going to have to reanalyze any positions that we're in with the US dollar. We have a good run. A good clear run from Monday into Tuesday. So I think there could be some good opportunity there. So moving into Wednesday, uh, we have CPI data month for month for the Canadian dollar. As mentioned, they were expecting CPI data to increase, inflation data to increase. They were expecting unemployment to decrease. So they were expecting employment to increase. So again, we're seeing that come coming through in the data now. You know, the previous forecast was at minus 0.4%. Current forecast, 0.2%. So we're expecting some positive inflation data there for the Canadian dollar. <clears throat> um, Friday afternoon, uh, Wednesday afternoon, sorry, Fed. Chair Powell uh, is testifying again. He's continuing his testimonial. Uh, we might see that into Thursday as well. Um, no, so 
just uh, choose uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Federal Reserve Chair, uh, Chairman Governor Powell is uh, continuing his testimonial, so we might see a little bit of uh, uh, volatility there. Then moving into Thursday, the ANZ business confidence for New Zealand dollar. This tends to move the New Zealand dollar quite significantly. So I I would I wouldn't like to be in a position with the New Zealand dollar at this time. Okay. Uh, and private capital expenditure quarter on quarter. This doesn't move the markets too much for the Aussie dollar. So I you know, if you're in a position with the Aussie dollar on thir you know, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. I wouldn't expect this to be too volatile. So the Aussie dollar should be okay, but the New Zealand dollar, I wouldn't risk it. And then Friday, we have Fed Chair Powell speaking at uh, quarter past one in the morning, so maybe an evening dinner. Yeah, there we go, guys. So uh, at the Citizens Budget Commission Awards dinner. So it's an after-dinner speech. We very rarely see US dollar data come out at this time. That's the evening in America. So, you know, we, we tend to see um, it's just an after-dinner after speech. Nothing major. And then to finish off Friday, ISM manufacturing PMI data and GDP month-on-month -month for the CAD. GDP month on month um, shouldn't move the Canadian dollar too much. It's quite, it's been quite steady um, over the past couple of months. If we can see, uh, you know, again that good, that that positive figure, we should see some buyers come into the Canadian dollar. But uh, ultimately, this shouldn't move the market too much. Uh, ISM manufacturing PMI data again. Shouldn't move the market too much. So Friday evening we should be uh, should be okay. But guys, I'm expecting to be done and dusted by Friday afternoon. I'm expecting to have made some great profits in the week. So by Friday afternoon, ISM manufacturing. Although it might, uh, although we might see a little bit of volatility, you know, we should be done by then and we should be looking forward to uh, some great profits so guys very very well done let's take a look at the markets let's take a look at the week ahead and first of all guys uh, what I have for you is the euro US dollar and this was something that I was looking at last week, um, towards the end of last week. And as you can see from my lines, this is, you know, the behavior that I was expecting to happen. And this was off of this reversal here, you know, after this positive candle came into the market and we instantly reversed, I was expecting the sellers to come into the market. What we've seen since is this retracement behavior. So guys, this still meets the criteria. But what we may have to do is just move over ever so slightly because we've seen the consolidation take part in the market. We were expecting this from mid last week, this kind of behavior, but we didn't quite get there. Okay. So, guys, what I'm going to look to do with you on the euro US dollar is something um, that, you know, only you guys in this webinar with me tonight are going to understand why we've taken this position. So what we're going to do, okay, is we're not going to take this position straight away. We're going to look to the week ahead, okay? And 
guys, can can any of you in the room here with me tonight just let me know if you're not in the Facebook group? If you're in the Facebook group, fantastic. Because this is going to be a two part with this trade. Okay, so we've just got to wait for a little bit more information. The reason why we can't set it up tonight is because I need this level here at the 113 handle to get hit. I need this level to get hit. And once this level has been hit, then we can look for a sell limit at this 1330 level. So guys, can you just, uh, just bear with me one second. Just want to ensure that, um, you know, you're all comfortable with this. So guys, I just want you, um, after I've gone through this, if you understand what I'm, uh, what I'm looking for with the euro dollar, can you put a yes? If you're unsure, just pop a no. And guys, please don't, you know, feel bad about putting no in if you're unsure. Always tell me. Always tell me if you're unsure, and we can we can go over it again. Um, to explain it as best as possible because I can go through the charts but I want you to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing so if you're ever unsure just pop a message into the group and we can put the brakes on very quickly and just go over that together to ensure that we all move forward as a group okay that is what success is about. It's about creating that community of profitable traders and moving forward together as a group. So if you're ever unsure, please don't hesitate to say. So guys, this is what I'm expecting for the week ahead. So what we're going to have to see quickly with the euro US dollar is we're going to have to see this leg down to the 113 handle when the one when the 113 handle and by handle I mean the whole number so the 113 the 114 the 115 these are all price handles okay 115 114 113 etc these are all price handles. So when I see this price handle at 113 met, that is when I'm going to place my sell limit order on the euro US dollar. And for me, guys, that is why I'm going to have to do this in two parts. Because if we were down at this level already, perfect. I could set this up with you tonight. We could set a sell limit order at this level and we could look for that to play out for the week ahead. But we don't quite have that luxury. So what we need to see is a bit more information. We need to be a bit more patient and wait for this to move down because we can't put a sell limit in place if we're trading above this level we would need to place a sell stop and i want to wait for this reaction first before we place a sell stop i want to wait for that profit target and uh, profit take and then we can use the last swing as our stop so guys this is what i'm looking for when we do have that opportunity we're going to have about a 30, 40 pip stop loss for our trade position. And we're going to be looking to exit, you know, down at the support levels, down at the 112.30, 112.40 price level. You know, giving us around 90 pips of expected profit for around a 30, 40 pip stop loss. So we have a fantastic opportunity for the euro dollar ahead. We just need to be a little bit patient. 
So this is going to be a two part. So guys, when we break that level, I'll place a message into the group. When we break through this level and we touch that 130, uh, sorry, 113, there'll be a message into the Facebook group saying, guys, it's meeting the criteria. I have placed a sell limit. Let's take advantage and let's make some profits. So this is my position looking forward next week with the euro US dollar. So something we're going to have to do in two parts, guys. But we'll be there with you to, to guide you uh, through the position. So moving on to the last chart I have for you this evening and this chart is um without further ado let's get the chart up the aussie dollar against the japanese yen let's take this on to the daily and let's see what we have taking place over this asset i've seen so very you know fantastic price movements to the downside and then we saw the flash crash within the Aussie Japanese yen. And the Aussie dollar Japanese yen is a good overall economic indicator. And the reason being is because, of course, Japanese yen is, uh, you know, by far one of the, the largest safe haven currencies. And Australia is a commodities backed market. Okay, although although it is a commodities backed market, we see a lot of trade between Australia and China. And when we start to see a slowdown within that trade, we tend to see uh, an appreciation or uh, within the safe haven currencies. When we see that that slowdown in trade, when we see that uncertainty uh, between, uh, especially coming from China. You know, we see um, that appreciation in the uh, safe haven currency. So ideally, guys, really, we'd want to look at the Chinese yuan to the Japanese yen. But uh, the spread on that currency pair is not very nice. Yeah, um, it's a very large spread indeed, guys. So uh, I think, you know, we're better off looking to the Australian dollar rather than over to the Chinese economy. But because, you know, the Australian dollar and the Chinese economy are quite closely interlinked, you know, we can, uh, we can use the Aussie yen as a good overall economic indicator. So I think there's some good opportunity to the downside. We saw the sellers come back in on the daily after this, um, you know, after this flash crash, we had that consolidation. We had the buyers coming back into the market and we saw this consolidation taking place. And then the sellers came back into the market, guys. And this very quickly, if I can show you. Um, this is just off of just this little bit. It's just off of the top of my head. It looks like it fits quite well. Oh, and it does. There we go. We have our support levels there from this consolidation. We have this support channel from where the candlestick closed after that flash crash this support level and now this selling day pushed us below that level and we've retested this as resistance and thursday guys we saw a, a bearish engulfing candle which engulfed you know almost four days of price action this was a very powerful day and we're seeing the sellers coming back into the market. So I think 
this is a good indication for the week ahead in terms of a market signal. And I think there's a great opportunity for us to take full advantage of this. So, what? how would I look to take advantage of this? What am I looking for with this chart? Let's uh, zoom, zoom out a little bit. There we go, on the four hourly. Bring the chart back down. Oh, back down this way. There we go. Expand that slightly a bit more. There we go. So, first of all, guys, you know, this... Around this price area here, we have some, you know, the 79.20. We have some brilliant price action taking place. This was initially where the sellers came back in after that flash crash, pushing up to those highs. This is where the sellers came in first time and again. Again, the sellers came in from this level and we saw order accumulation there we broke out above this level and the roll was reversed it went from resistance to support we broke through that support level and then once again retested it as resistance and again i mean guys look <laughs> like we've we've got a bearish engulfing here off of this resistance level we have a bearish engulfing here off of this resistance level again a bearish engulfing candle off of this resistance level and almost again a bearish engulfing off of that resistance level the 7920s is my area of interest because this is where the sellers are coming into the market strongly and overpowering that buying pressure can you see those market signals just pop a yes in the box for me if you can see those market signals guys here that bearish engulfing here this bearish engulfing and here this bearish engulfing candle very powerful market signals so i think we have a great opportunity to look to sell from the 7920 and we have a good structure here above the 7980 to use our uh, to use for our stop loss giving us a, a slightly larger stop loss than usual you know not really looking for you know anything larger than 60 70 pips unless we're trading on the daily or the weekly time frame um, you know so quite uh, to, to the limits of you know what I would look for in a in an intraday position um over the the short to mid term it was about 60 pip stop but the the price action looks fantastic and the structure that we have is brilliant so let's uh let's get a uh a label done uh with the specifics for our trade so what we're looking for guys we are looking for a sell limit on the Australian US dollar and we're looking to come in from that 7920 level that we spoke about so we'll just come in just below at 7918 just to ensure that it doesn't miss our entry like it has done the past couple of weeks <laughs> of course we've had a uh, the Aussie dollar miss our entry by a few pips and then go on to meet our expectation. And of course, last week we saw that again with the, uh, with silver. So let's take a few pips off our entry to ensure that we get picked up with our trade position. So sell limit at 79, just below that 79.20 at 79.18. Our stop loss for this position, well, as we mentioned, guys, the structure that we have above that 79.80 is fantastic. So I think, you know, we're going to put our stop loss just at this structure, just above these highs of the structure. So looking at uh, about, you know, about 79.82 uh, 79 for 
our, our stop loss on this position, 79.82. Giving us a 64 pip stop loss, uh, as we mentioned, a little bit larger than we uh, would normally expect. But um, the, our entry level and our stop loss are both fantastic technical levels. So the opportunity that we have technically is a fantastic opportunity and the profit uh, our expected profit target is going to be quite a large profit target uh, you know in in terms of movement so what are we looking for for a profit target are we looking you know to, to take this back down you know right down to um, those levels from the flash crash Not quite looking to take it down that far for us, you know. That's uh, be a few pips away. Seventy nine twenty is where we're looking for. This is down towards the seventy five, even further down to well the seventy one and seventy fifty price level. So we're not quite expecting to take it that far, but most certainly, guys, you know, down to this next major area of support around seventy seven eighty. You know, this is a uh, fantastic price level fantastic exit level as you can see there is some buying pressure that comes in from this level so for me you know i would expect the buyers to come in at this level once again therefore i you know i don't want to be holding it down to the next level at you know 7710 or you know even down to the next significant point at 7627 so for me now that 77.70 is looking like a good exit indeed from this trade position. So let's just take that just a, just a, a smidge the other side at 77.75. So the profit target for this position just above the 77.72 price level, the significant price level, previous support level, where we've seen some good buying pressure come into the markets. Going to just exit above that level at 77.75. Giving us a good expectation of around 140 pips, 143 pips for our trade. Giving us around a two to one expectation uh, with our position there. So this is what I'm expecting for the week ahead with the Aussie US dollar. Guys, the Euro US dollar I think has some fantastic potential as well, but we've just got to be a little bit more patient. We've just got to wait for that 113 handle to be hit and then we can look to place our order. The Aussie dollar Japanese yen well that meets the criteria that we can place a pending order in the market ready to be hit uh, guys what I will say is I would recommend placing this you know after midnight UK time Monday morning um, so uh, you know uh, well, obviously, uh, we're Sunday evening now. It's five past eight UK local time. So, you know, I would avoid placing this position until 12 p.m. or 0 a.m. Uh, Monday morning, just because the spreads, of course, are reduced. Um, and I wouldn't want for us to get a, a worse entry into this position because of the spreads on a Sunday evening okay so I'm going to be placing this position at midnight um, it doesn't matter if you're uh, you know not awake at the moment guys I'm not ex you know uh, not awake at the uh, you know uh, at midnight this this position will be fine to place Monday morning uh, I doubt you know I'll see this position triggered until Monday morning maybe monday afternoon so we've got some great potential with this position um guys do we have any questions 
over the Aussie yen or over the um, uh, the euro US dollar? If you have any questions, please pop those into the group and we can uh, just go over those before we finish up. Alternatively, guys, if there's anything that you want me to take a look at this evening, then just let me know. Just pop into the groups if there's any, um, you know, if there's any charts that you want me to take a look at. Just pop into the group and we can go over those together. Okay, so if you are writing out a question, I'll give you a few more moments to do so. If not, we will wrap up here for this evening. Guys, we have some fantastic positions lined up for the week ahead. Positions that I'm sure our entry will be met, <laughs> just as our expectations have been met for the past, uh, past couple of weeks. So, hoping for us to pick up on the entry and then, of course, work our way to the profit targets. So guys, well done this evening. Great work. If you have any questions, just pop those into the Luxess group Facebook and we can go through those together. If you think of anything after the webinar and you think, oh, I should have asked Matt that question, please don't hesitate to give me a message. It's never too late and I enjoy questions. I enjoy questions, so keep them coming. <laughs> Very well done tonight, guys. I wish you all a fantastic week ahead. I will place an update for you in the group with the Euro US dollar. And, um, you know, if, if we're good to place that order, we'll get that placed and I'll provide you an update with the Aussie dollar Japanese yen as well. Thank you very much everybody. I wish you all a wonderful evening and a very profitable week ahead within the markets. I wish you only the very best. Take care and bye-bye for now.